Pat Tillman is an American hero. Often in the modern age, we call our favorite sports player a hero. And while there are many honorable traits that go into being a professional athlete, Pat Tillman was a truly heroic man in a way most athletes can't compare to. Foregoing a multi-million dollar NFL contract to join the Army in the wake of 9-11, becoming a U.S. Army Ranger, and eventually giving the ultimate sacrifice. Unfortunately, his death in combat surrounded in betrayal, cover-ups, and negligence. But that was will not overshadow the giant of a man Pat Tillman was. Today on Football Lore, we're going to discuss the heroic man we all should strive to embody more every day, exploring his NFL career, life, and tragic death. His story is a stirring testament to the values of courage, commitment, and the unyielding pursuit of what one believes to be right. Even at the greatest personal cost, Tillman's life, therefore, stands as a beacon, inspiring not just athletes and soldiers, but every individual who aspires to live with with integrity and purpose. Pat was born in November of 1976 in Fremont, California. Fremont at the time was a very tight-knit community that prided itself on its friendliness and patriotism. It was instilled in him early that service to others was important. His family was incredibly close, and all of them felt a need to serve their community. His father, also named Patrick, was an attorney, and his mother Mary had a career as a special education teacher. They both instilled early into their three sons the importance of hard work and doing Doing what was right. All three sons, Pat, Kevin, and Richard, were natural leaders and athletes. Pat grew up playing a few sports, but never really felt particularly drawn to football specifically. In fact, he initially didn't even play football as a freshman in high school, instead opting to be a catcher for the baseball team. His sophomore season, he decided to focus on football, and he found he was a natural. Amidst this period of growth and self-discovery, Pat's character was being honed, not just on the field, but in every aspect of his life. His switch from baseball to football was not a mere change of sport, but a reflection of his willingness to embrace new challenges and push beyond comfort zones. This adaptability and resilience would later become hallmarks of his life, guiding him through not just athletic pursuits, but also in his academic endeavors and his profound decision to serve his country. His time in high school laid a robust foundation for the extraordinary journey that lay ahead, shaping a young athlete into a man of profound integrity and determination. Pat was a talented football player, but for a linebacker was considered relatively undersized coming out of high school. He wasn't some 6'7", 400-pound monster of a linebacker. He was 5'11 and just under 200 pounds, but his small size didn't hinder his ability to make impactful plays across the field. His natural talent for football helped make up for his smaller size, but he also had the benefit of having a naturally high intellect. His work ethic didn't only apply to sports. He was a gifted student and enjoyed the process of learning regardless of the subject. It was around this time he also met the woman that would eventually become his wife, Marie Tillman. They were high school sweethearts who would stay by each other forever. There was some doubt that Pat would be able to transition successfully to the college game, if even managed to get a scholarship in the first place, but thankfully, ASU came knocking for Tillman with a roster spot and free tuition. He was quite literally the last remaining scholarship spot open that year, but he'd make sure ASU would never regret their decision. It was here he really started to shine even brighter as a prospect. Being naturally smart allowed him to recognize offensive schemes in ways some players can only dream of, and his smaller size gave him the agility to plug holes on the defense. It was a common sight to see him chasing down breakaway runs and being the only player able to make the stop. Being a student of just one game never was enough to satisfy the insatiable need for knowledge Pat had. When he wasn't in the weight room or on the field, he could be found discussing intellectual topics with others. He had a depth of knowledge and philosophical concepts, political ideology, religions of the world, and truly cared deeply for others' well-being. I really want to stress how naturally smart Pat was. On top of being a Division I linebacker for four years, he was able to graduate a half a year early with a 3.85 GPA. An NFL career was not a given, and Pat wasn't going to be in a situation where his college football days were done, and he had no degree to show for it. We're going to be talking more about his college football career in detail, but just keep in mind while all of this is going on, he's still crushing his classes and graduating early. There really was nothing that he wasn't capable of doing if given the chance to work on it. In his sophomore year at ASU, Pat Tillman's burgeoning talent and innate leadership qualities became increasingly evident. Not only did his athletic performance enhance, but his ability to motivate and 
inspire his teammates also grew markedly. This year set the stage for what would be a remarkable junior year, where he played a pivotal role in leading the Sun Devils to an undefeated season, culminating in a memorable Rose Bowl appearance. His skills on the field were recognized widely, earning him the honor of being named the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. During this time, Pat formed a significant bond with teammate Jake Plummer, a relationship that went beyond the football field. Their camaraderie and mutual respect were profound, with Plummeter later honoring Tillman in a deeply personal way by growing out his hair and beard throughout his NFL career. This gesture was a tribute to Tillman's legacy, symbolizing the lasting impact he had on those around him. Pat's final year at ASU only solidified his reputation as an exceptional athlete. He continued to excel, consistently making critical plays and showcasing his unique ability to read and react to the game with uncanny precision. His performances not only led to wins, but also inspired his team, setting an example of hard work and dedication. His senior year achievements led to a well-deserved selection as ASU's most valuable player, an accolade that spoke volumes about his contribution to the team. After a stellar college career marked by both team and personal successes, Pat declared for the NFL draft. His legacy at ASU ASU was not just about the records and accolades, but also about the indelible mark he left on the program. His impact was such that in 2008, he was posthumously inaugurated into the ASU Football Hall of Fame, an honor that he undoubtedly would have achieved regardless of his tragic fate. Pat's time at ASU was a significant chapter in his life, laying the groundwork for his future endeavors, both on the football field and beyond. At 5'11", Pat was dramatically undersized for a linebacker, so there wasn't a huge demand for him early in the draft. The Arizona Cardinals had been watching Pat develop in their backyard at ASU and decided that with the 226th pick, it would be worth selecting Tillman to potentially fill a role as a safety. Safety wasn't a position Tillman had a lot of experience with, but like anything before in his life, he managed to be great at it. His first season in the NFL playing a brand new position, he managed to have 74 tackles, a sack, and one first down on the offensive side of the ball. Considering Arizona managed to get that productivity out of a 226 pick, Pat was hugely outperforming expectations. The 1999 season did see a small dip in football numbers, but 2000 was a monster year for Tillman. He had 155 tackles, 1.5 sacks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, nine pass deflections, and an interception. It was clear to all in the NFL that Pat Tillman was a safety that was going to be a problem for a long time. It wasn't just on the field that Pat was an NFL standout, however. His loyalty to the Arizona Cardinals organization was equally as unique. He actually turned down a five-year, $9 million contract with the Rams in order to stay loyal to the team that drafted him. He always drove the same beat-up pickup truck to the games had no cell phone, and still preferred to talk about real issues. He was the type of man that wasn't corrupted by his power, money, or fame. He managed to stay completely grounded in who he was as a person. The 2001 season was still impressive for Tillman. He had 92 tackles and was efficient in coverage, but his mind wasn't on football. Early in the 2001 season, America was rocked by the September 11th attacks. Thousands of Americans senselessly lost their lives in an act of terrorism, and a nation was reeling for revenge against those who seek to attack them. In the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks, Pat's quoted by a reporter as saying, At times like this, you stop and think about just how good we have it, what kind of system we live in, and the freedoms were allowed. A lot of my family's gone and fought in wars, and I really haven't done a damn thing. He decided that after finishing that season, that he would enlist in the Army to serve his nation. He turned down a $3.6 million deal from the Cardinals in order to purposely enlist in the armed forces at a time of certain conflict. The amount of strength, bravery, and selflessness to a greater cause is completely jaw-dropping. Even after turning down the contract, there was something else he had to do before enlisting. He married his high school sweetheart, Marie, in 2002, the same woman he had been loyal to throughout his career. Pat Tillman's relationship with his wife, Marie, was a testament to their enduring love and deep connection. They met in high school, forming a bond that would only strengthen over the years. Marie, a constant in Pat's life, was not just his partner, but also his confidant and biggest supporter. She admired his relentless drive, whether on the football field or in his academic pursuits, and shared his values of integrity and service. Their relationship was built on mutual respect and a shared understanding of the importance of following one's convictions. Even when Pat made the life-altering decision to leave his NFL career and join the Army, Marie stood by him, showcasing her resilience and unwavering support. Her strength during his military service 
and later, her grace in the face of tragedy highlighted the depth of their partnership. Marie's role in Pat's life was more than that of a spouse. She was an integral part of his journey, reflecting the same spirit of dedication and commitment that he embodied. After marrying Marie, he enlisted in the army with his brother Kevin on May 31, 2002. They both decided to go above and beyond even the standard call of duty and hoped to become U.S. Army Rangers once they completed their training. The amount of physical and mental strength both the brothers had made them obvious candidates for selection at Ranger School and were assigned to 2nd Ranger Battalion in Washington for training. Kevin was a hero in his own right. He had been playing professional baseball at the time, set aside his sports career to join the Army Rangers alongside Pat. Their decision to enlist and serve together was a powerful testament to their close relationship and shared principles. Kevin's journey through military service, particularly after Pat's tragic death in Afghanistan, profoundly impacted his life and perspectives. He's since been an advocate for truth and accountability regarding military actions, often speaking about his experiences and his brother's legacy. Kevin's life, like Pat's, reflects a narrative of courage, integrity, and an unflinching commitment to what they believed was right. Kevin and Pat were both excited for Ranger School. However, it would have to wait, as both Pat and Kevin would be sent to Iraq to assist in the 2003 invasion. After helping with the initial push of Operation Desert Storm, he returned to the United States to complete Ranger School in Georgia. At this point, Pat had begun to become disillusioned by why the United States was in Iraq. He loved his nation and didn't regret his decision to serve, but he was aware that the invasion of Iraq was not directly linked to the attacks on 9-11. He had called the invasion of Iraq illegal, and some allege had serious issues with the way things were being done in the Middle East on the ground. After both he and his brother Kevin completed Ranger School, Pat was redeployed to Afghanistan stand in the most southeastern province. The fighting in this region was particularly intense, and it was common for patrols to engage in combat. Tragically, on April 22, 2004, Pat Tillman gave the ultimate sacrifice for his nation. Before we discuss the sad, deceitful actions of the U.S. government following his sacrifice, it's important we once again acknowledge the weight of Pat's choice. This was a man who wasn't expected to go to war. No one was demanding that NFL players enlist to serve. This was a man who had millions of dollars, college degrees, a wife, a family, a community who still chose to put his life on the line for the purpose of defending his nation. Pat Tillman was an intelligent, strong, brave man who was willing to put his nation above himself. That deserves nothing but admiration and respect. No matter what walk of life you come from, what side of political spectrum you exist on, this was a man willing to die for us to enjoy our freedoms. That respect for Pat is also what makes the acts that followed on the end of the U.S. government all the more angering. The Army initially told the story that Pat and his unit had encountered an ambush outside of a village near the Pakistan border. Through the course of that ambush, Pat had acted valiantly to clear the path for his fellow soldiers, but ultimately succumbed to enemy fire. The truth was very different than that version of reality. There was some truth, mainly that Pat and his unit had come under enemy fire at some point, but it wasn't that enemy fire that killed Pat. The issue was that as Pat and his unit came to assist the unit being ambushed, they were fired upon by U.S. forces. The official report reads as follows. During their movement through the Canyon Road. Serial 2, which was a half of his unit he wasn't with, was ambushed and became engaged in a running gun battle with enemy combatants. Serial 1, which Tillman was operating with, had just passed through the same canyon without incident and were approximately one kilometer ahead of Serial 2. Upon hearing explosions, gunfire, and sporadic radio communication from Serial 2, Serial 1 dismounted their vehicles and moved on foot to a more advantageous position to provide overwatch and fire support for Serial 2's movement out of the ambush. Upon exiting the gorge, and despite attempts by Serial 1 to signal a friendly position, occupants of the lead vehicle of Serial 2 opened fire on Tillman's position, where he was fatally shot. Obviously, this is a completely different series of events leading up to an American hero's death. The Army tried to cover this up throughout the initial reporting of Tillman's death in the American media. The Army thought that if they admitted that he had been killed by way of friendly fire, that it would undermine the legitimacy of the U.S. military. It was also thought it could be used to dissuade Americans from supporting the war or joining the military in the first place. Basically, the government decided that it was in their best interest to lie and cover it up, because they were too embarrassed to admit he had been killed due to their actions. As more details came out, the details became even more blurred. Allegedly, he had 
Brandon attempted to identify himself to the friendly troops that fired upon him by screaming, I'm Pat effing Tillman, implying that there could be an even further sinister twist in this tragic story. He had been fired upon several times at close range, and there were disputes upon how many enemy combatants actually had been present. In 2007, it was revealed that even the army examiners of the body had encouraged the army to investigate the issue as a homicide due to the strange nature of his wounds. They simply weren't consistent with truly accidental friendly fire under fog of war circumstances. On top of these already strange circumstances came even more sad details, like the fact that the forces that had friendly fired upon him had also burned his uniform, journals, and personal items after. The Tillmans had to fight for literally years to get the army to finally take accountability for the fact that Tillman had been killed by friendly fire. They paraded Pat around like someone who had made a brave sacrifice against enemy combatants, when in reality, he had been cowardly stricken down by his fellow soldiers. The parading around him as a symbol to enlist in the military is even more disturbing when you realize Tillman's exact thoughts on that. He allegedly told his friends to not let anyone parade him through the streets, if he dies. But after his death, the army used him as a piece of propaganda exactly against his wishes. His brother Kevin summarized it best when given the chance to address the issue before Congress. Congress. The deception surrounding this case was an insult to my family, but more importantly, its primary purpose was to deceive a whole nation. The other details that make the mystery even more cloudy are bizarre. For example, there's not even any recorded evidence of any enemy fire near Tillman's death. There were also several American attorneys who had been sending emails back and forth celebrating their success in delaying investigations. The full extent of the investigation to this day is not easily understood, but it can be agreed upon that there was a plethora of sketchy actions by the military trying to cover their butt. They didn't really care how harmful this could be for his family. They were more worried about avoiding the ire of the American in public. Following his tragic death, Pat Tillman was posthumously awarded the Silver Star Medal, a testament to his bravery and gallantry in the face of combat. This honor reflects the extraordinary courage he displayed, a characteristic that defined his life both on and off the field. In the wake of this immense loss, his widow, Marie, established the Pat Tillman Foundation. This noble endeavor was not just a tribute to his memory, but a continuation of his legacy, embodying the values and principles he lives by. The foundation, under Marie's dedicated leadership, specializes in empowering veterans and military spouses. It focuses on providing them with educational opportunities and fostering leadership development, two areas deeply resonant with the ethos Pat Tillman embodied. Through these efforts, the foundations become a beacon of hope and support for those who have served their country, aiding them in their transition to civilian life and helping them to achieve their educational and career goals. One of the foundation's most notable events is the annual Pat's Run held in Tempe, Arizona. This event's grown into a significant gathering drawing tens of thousands of participants each year. It's not just a race, it's a communal celebration of Tillman's life and legacy, a physical embodiment of the perseverance and strength he exemplified. The funds raised from this event contribute significantly to the Foundation's efforts. The impact of the Pat Tillman Foundation has been profound and far-reaching, with over $24 million contributed to the academic assistance of military families and a focus on leadership development, the foundations become a pivotal force in supporting those who have served. The establishment of over 1,000 scholarships in Tillman's name at academic institutions worldwide extends his legacy globally, supporting the education and advancement of countless individuals. Beyond his foundation, Tillman's legacy is commemorated in other significant ways. The Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge, towering over the Hoover Dam and linking Nevada and Arizona serves as a physical monument to his memory. This engineering marvel, near the state where he spent much of his football career, stands as a symbol of the bridging between his athletic achievements and his service to the nation. Pat Tillman's influence extended deeply into the sports world and beyond. His unique style, marked by his characteristic long hair and beard, inspired many NFL players to emulate his appearance in tribute. These players, along with countless others, were profoundly impacted by his relentless pursuit of knowledge and self improvement. Tillman was a role model not just in his physical prowess, but in his intellectual and moral rigor. In his community, Pat Tillman was more than a sports hero. He was a vital member who sought to make a lasting impact on the world around him. His death left a void, but also a legacy that continues to inspire and motivate. His life 
life story is a reminder of the power of individual action and the profound impact one person can have on the lives of many. Pat Tillman's name and his deeds continue to resonate, encouraging others to live with purpose, dedication, and a commitment to making a difference in the world. As for his remembrance in the football world, his legacy echoes through the halls of his former high school, where they've renamed their arena in his honor, a lasting tribute to a hometown hero who transcended the sport. His alma mater, Arizona State University, has not only retired the number 42, a symbol of his relentless spirit on the field, but also remains actively involved in supporting his foundation contributing to its fundraising efforts annually. This ongoing commitment reflects the deep impact he had on the institution. In the professional realm, the Arizona Cardinals, recognizing his exceptional character and contribution to the team, retired his number 40. This rare honor signifies the indelible mark he left, not just as a player, but as a person of profound integrity. Furthermore, the Pac-10 Conference, in a fitting tribute to his prowess on the field, renamed its Defensive Player of the Year award in his honor. Immortalizing his legacy in the annals of college football, the NFL continues to honor his memory through their Salute to Service program, supporting the Pat Tillman Foundation. This partnership exemplifies the league's recognition of Tillman's ultimate sacrifice and the values he stood for. Tillman's story is one of a remarkable individual who seamlessly combined peak athletic performance with an astute mental acuity. His dedication to his family and his unwavering commitment to his principles made him a role model. His decision to leave behind a life of comfort and prestige for the rigors and risks of military service and what he believed was a noble cause epitomizes the essence of heroism. Yet, the circumstances surrounding Surrounding his tragic end cast a shadow of controversy and sorrow. The initial concealment of the details of his death by the government and their subsequent use of his story for propaganda left a lingering sense of injustice. This aspect of his story is a stark reminder of the complexities and sometimes painful realities of heroism and sacrifice. Had fate taken a different course, Tillman might have enjoyed a prolonged, illustrious NFL career, potentially gracing Pro Bowls and amassing further accolades and wealth. However, his choice to follow a path of bravery and self-sacrifice to serve his country in a time of need was a decision of profound courage and selflessness. It's a reminder that the freedoms we often take for granted come at a cost. Pat Tillman's story is one of true heroism, a poignant example of the depths of human potential and the strength of character. His life, though tragically cut short, serves as a beacon, inspiring us to strive to embody even a fraction of his courage and integrity. The positive impact he had on virtually everyone he met is a testament to the kind man he was, a true American hero whose legacy continues to inspire and resonate with people from all walks of life. Tillman's story is not just about a soldier or an athlete. It's a narrative about an individual's unwavering commitment to his principles, even when faced with the ultimate sacrifice. His decision to leave behind a lucrative NFL career for the battlefields of the Middle East was a testament to his character, a resolute statement that some things, like national duty and moral responsibility, are above personal glory and comfort. It's this rare quality of selflessness and steadfastness that continues to inspire countless Americans. Serving as a beacon of true leadership in an era often characterized by fleeting and superficial heroics. If you enjoyed this documentary, we'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button and comment down below. It really does help the video and the algorithm, and we feel this is an important video for people to see. In addition, if you enjoy documentaries like this, we make them regularly about all things football. We're trying to build a community of people who appreciate the stories and people that make football lore so great, and we'd love it if you turned on your notifications and helped us do that. Thank you all so much for watching the video this far. Thank you for watching.